this is a demonstration on the use of the Dolan machine to uh, measure the water absorption and the given indication of the protein quality of a particular flower sample. So, on the main PC, we opened up the Dolan application, which you should see come up on the main screen. And we're going to uh, select a test. The test, because I'm choosing a white flower sample for this particular demonstration, Birmingham Uni 300 grams is the one that I would select. So I can then put in the sample details. So this is demo one. Um, So you'd normally type in the flower sample you're doing, uh, any details about who the manufacturer is, um, and most very importantly, what the date on the flower sample is. So if it's a 2019 batch of flower, or a 2020, it really makes a big difference. So we're going to look at that. Um, we're then going to um, try to guess or from previous experience, try and ha have an idea how much water would go into this sample. So I'm going to put this particular sample, because it's a strong white flower, at about 65% water absorption. So I'm then, that's ready for me to then start. I'm going to start the test. The machine is then going to run. So the machine has to work out, while it's empty, what the strain is on the motor. So it's going to run for a short while, um, while it does that, um, and then it says add the flower. Now, the flower, I've got the flower sample, is measured at exactly 300.0 grams. It does need to be very accurate to make sure you get a good, clean, accurate result. And all of that sample goes in the mixing chamber, then topped, put down and locked into place. Before we started we made sure that the machine was turned on about 15 minutes in advance to warm the chamber up. There was plenty of deionized water that will be fed into the uh, mixing chamber and that the tap and drain for the dough lab has been turned on well in advance to cool the temperature of the chamber to the correct point. We're then go press the continue button. It's then going to mix for about a minute without any water. This is to stabilise the temperature of the particular sample. So while it's doing that, you can just have a tidy up, make sure everything's uh, out of the way. This test is going to take approximately 20 to 25 minutes in total. Then the machine will be, need to be washed up before it can be used again. So you're basically talking about one test every 30 to 40 minutes, which is quite slow, but it's a very accurate test. Um, in the uh, uh, flour mills where these machines are used, uh, they quite often do five or six, seven, eight um, tests per day. So we're just coming up to the test time and now the machine is adding the specific set of water into the mixer and we will start to see a trace appear on the main uh, screen. What that is measuring is the force that the blades are exerting on that dough. And obviously as it becomes a less of a powder and more of a dough, more and more energy is required to mix that dough. 
So it's starting to level off in places now. And what we'll see in a few moments time is that on the graph there's actually three lines. There's a top line, a middle line and a bottom line. So the top and bottom lines are the elasticity, so how much it is being pulled uh, between, the, uh, so how strong the gluten is. Uh, the middle line is an average of those two readings from it stretching and letting go. Now ideally, um, we're trying to get that central line uh, onto what we call the 600 line. So up at the top of the graph is the 600 line. We're trying to get that centre uh, of the graph, the centre line, onto to peak at that particular 600 line point. That's when we know we've got the right amount of water going in. Now the machine can help adjust further tests so if you get pretty close in the first place, it will tell you how much it either estimates you should put in for to get it onto that 600 line. Our standard uh, to measure all the flowers against is that 600 line. So that's always where we're aiming for in the UK. Now if we were on the continent, say France or Belgium, they would be aiming for a 500 line. So it does differ depending on where you are in the world. Um, as you can see now, the three lines have separated nice and cleanly, and we're starting to get a peak at around the 600 line point. So we're going to allow this to continue. Um, I'm going to come back uh, to this demonstration uh, just before the 20 minute mark, where I can show uh, the result of this particular trace sample. Continuing the demonstration for the dough lab on a sample of flour, once the 20 minute trace is fully completed, uh, the machine will uh, bring up a pop-up uh, saying that there is some uh, data already there, do we want to overwrite that, uh, which we go yes we do. And it then brings up the results of our test. Uh, now what we can do is we can print this off if the computer is linked to a uh, printer, or we can save that information. The main thing that we are looking for is in this section here. So, water absorption at target corrected. That means it's looking to uh, give us what the water absorption is for uh, the 600 line. So we can compare that against all the other flower samples. So in this case, it says 67.74%. And that is what we would uh, record for this particular flower sample. The other thing that's really useful to look at is the actual screen uh, where we can see the trace. Now, what we have is indicated what, where the peak is. So this is peaking this particular sample at 610. Remember we want it to peak at 600 for accurate results. So we redo this test. Um, and it would then also give us how the development time. So how long did it take of mixing to get to that peak time? And in this case, the development was in two minutes, 57 seconds. So a very uh, quick development time. Now if we compare this to a whole meal, uh, then the development time will be much, much later because the bran and the, the fibre soak the uh, water away from the protein, which means it takes a much longer time to fully develop the proteins. 
Again, one of the important things we do want to do is record this information. So if we go to View and Detailed Report, we can then put all the information into a report format, which we can then export and we can change that into a Microsoft Word document, give it a file name and you can save it so that you can either take it away and print it out or move it onto a file of your choice.